and set up today. We're going to out on the porch having a cup of coffee. It's a beautiful morning. It's already in the high 70s here. Looks like it's going to be a warm one today. I wanted to talk to you about taps. Now, if you're working on anything old or vintage, um, anything where you're going to get into heat, exhaust systems, manifolds, headers, things like that, uh, aluminum heads, anything where you think you're going to have to chase some threads, maybe you're building a bracket, uh, building some new holes, uh, cleaning something up, you're going to need some taps. And it's, uh, it's a little bit more complicated than just going to the store and buying a tap and die set. You want to get something high quality. The last thing you want to do is break a tap off in a hole. Then, you know, you run into all kinds of problems, especially with your little guys. You know, uh, anything quarter inch or under, uh, your 1024s, um, your 824s and 32s, you got to be real careful. You want to lubricate that tap really well with some tap magic or at least, you know, a decent quality oil. And then picking the right style tap for the job that you're going to do is also super important. Well, let me show you what I got here now. The first thing we're going to look at, and I didn't drag the whole set out here. Um, all the ones I'm going to show you today are going to be 3 8 uh, 3 8 16 basically, that's your national course, your standard old 3 8 bolt. Now, if you want to chase some threads, let's say you're uh, changing an intake manifold, changing an exhaust manifold on something early, um, you pulled an alternator off or a bracket, and you go to put that bolt back in, and the threads are ugly. Maybe they got old silicone or rust in there. Um, you know, could be anything. Maybe somebody tried to cross thread a bolt in and boogered the threads, and it was just a chore. The, the bolt looked ugly coming out. It was seized in there. If you just want to chase those threads and you don't want to do a lot of cutting or moving a lot of metal, Lang Tools makes a couple of beautiful sets. And the one I have covers your basic, most used sizes in standard and metric. Now, that's that stubby guy with the hex on him right there. This is a Lang. 3816 or national course thread chaser. Now, if you look at the flutes on that tap, those are just there basically to hold oil and let any trash escape. And you're going to want to go real slow, um, go down and until you see some resistance, back off, keep going. You can turn this thing with a wrench or a ratchet or a ratcheting wrench. These are fantastic, okay? They don't really cut. They don't move a lot of metal. They just basically reform that thread. Okay, if you'll notice, those aren't really cutting flutes. It's not super sharp. Now, this is the die that'll go in and cover up that bolt. Don't ever pull one of these out and think you've got a nut on your hands because you don't. This is for cleaning up the threads on a bolt or a stud. They've got a lot of flutes in there to let the trash get out of the way. Plenty of room for oil, and these work excellent. Now, if you've got something um, in a machine, uh, something where the threads are in a little bit worse shape, and you want to really get after it, you want to get a higher quality tap, this is a thread forming tap. It's a little bit sharper a little bit harder. I mean, very robust. It's going to be very difficult for you to bust that. Um, I've even seen them without any flutes at all, where they're just kind of cam-shaped threads. And these just basically go in there and smush the metal back into shape. They work great. Um, they will save your behind. Um, a lot of the times I'll use the 716's version of this in... Uh, Chevrolets or 289 302 Fords, um, the half inch version, you can use that for the mains or for the 351s, uh, and a lot of other vehicles. I think I have a 916s for big block Fords. Um, that'll go in there and clean up your head bolt threads and make sure you get proper torque reading. 
This is your fine thread version of the same. Your uh, re-threader, uh, thread chaser. That's not necessarily a tap. You know, the one common between these guys here is they are not gonna cut a brand new thread. Okay, those are just there to clean up your existing threads. And for a lot of guys, that's really all you're gonna need. Fairly inexpensive, you can get them on Amazon. Sometimes a good auto parts store or a parts house will have that set on the shelf. Um, try and buy it from your tool guy if you can. You know, support that independent. Now, and we move on to where we wanna cut threads. I have a couple of sets like this, just for convenience now but they'll give you a plug style tap. A plug style tap and the drill that matches it. <clears throat> now, if you wanna drill a new hole in something and put threads in it, you have to use the drill that, that matches the tap. And a tap and drill chart can be downloaded anywhere online. A lot of the times uh, machine style tools will come with one this particular case, uh, you use a 5 16 drill to tap a 3 8 hole. Well, that's not always the case. If you look like uh, a 7 16 coarse thread hole, we'll use a, a U drill bit. That's the letter style. A half inch 13 will use a 27 64 That leaves you just enough material to cut your new threads in and not go oversized and have a sloppy bolt hole. So you would want to use a drill bushing or a drill press whenever possible or try and hold that drill straight, drill that hole straight and very slowly go in and cut your new threads. Now if we backtrack a little bit, I called this a plug style tap. Now if you look at the bottom, there's different style taps. You'll have three to five tapered threads on a plug style tap. So you have a little bit of a lead-in edge, a little taper there, so it's easier to get your tap started in the material. That's more and more important the harder the metal is. Um, aluminum and sometimes cast iron, all you're going to need is a plug-style tap, especially with a smaller hole. And that's uh, that's considering you you drilled with the correct drill bit to begin with. The next style tap you'd look at, this would be the easiest, uh, especially when you're using or starting with a harder metal and you have the room on the other side. This is a tapered thread tap. Now that'll have between five and seven tapered threads on the bottom. And that'll really let you start that hole uh, with a little more ease. It'll ease into it. Um, if you can use a tapered style and you have one, there's nothing wrong with it. Sometimes we don't have enough room on the back side or we're doing a blind hole, you know. Then we run into, hey, I can't finish those threads completely all the way to the bottom. Now in that particular case, you'd move over and you'd get a bottoming tap. Now a bottoming tap is gonna have one to two unfinished threads. That's gonna focus on getting the bottom of that hole cut. Whenever possible, you do not want to use a bottoming tap to start that hole. Um, it, it, it'll just give you all kinds of trouble, and you could tear up the top threads pretty bad just trying to get the tap started. And these are a decent quality tap. These come from McMaster Carr. And if nobody's noticed yet, that little set in the plastic case, that's kind of a special set. Now, those are uh, 3816 like the other ones up here, those are actually left-hand thread. That I keep in a special spot. Um, let's say I have a big bolt that seized up in a hole or broke off. Um, I'll drill it out, put that thing in there, and thread a 3 8 bolt into whatever's left inside backwards. And then you can torque on that thing like crazy and try and back the stub out. 99% of the time, if you do it right, it works perfect. So sometimes it's not a bad idea to have a set of left-handed drills. A lot of the times, smaller bolts, it'll back them right out once they catch. 
uh, and a set of left-handed taps. That's not for everybody. You know, the more fabrication you're going to be doing, the more you're going to get into this kind of stuff. Now, the next three-eighths looks nothing like his brothers and sisters, and that is a three-eighths NPT, which is National Pipe Taper. Um, tapered pipe is a little bit different. That's your pipe plugs, your hex plugs, or your square-headed plugs that go into, say, oil galleys and water jackets and stuff in, in the engine, usually in the engine. Anywhere you're trying to plug leaks, um, your sensors, a lot of the times, are going to be tapered pipe threads. Now, it's just like it sounds. Um, it's designed to be tapered. Um, the correct way to put these things in is you start them, then you turn them in eight turns. If you turn them in more than that, your plug or your sensor is going to sit low. If you turn them in less, you might get a leak. You might have enough, you know, or you might not have enough threads gripping. Uh, might not be able to hold enough sealer to seal that hole up. Um, when you're taking press-in plugs, like in the front of a Chevrolet or an old Ford, um, those little bead-in press-in plugs out and putting screw-in plugs in, you have to be careful with this tap when you go in there and you thread those holes. Sometimes if you go too deep, that plug will block off part or all of an oil galley. And, you know, you end up having to grind on the back side of the plug. I've run into that before, uh, so be careful. But for the most part, it's a pretty simple thing. And they will actually go in there and chase the threads on... Um, on threaded or a pipe threaded hole you just have to be careful getting them started because with tapered pipe it's easy to gall the threads out and start crooked anyway dies are pretty self-explanatory you know that threads the outside that'll go on a big handle called a die stock and driving these things i'll show you in another video um there's various T-handles that will accept that square drive, the little square tang on the end of a tap. Um, your chasers from Lang, obviously you drive those with a wrench. Um, there's also ratcheting tap handles. Um, there's little tapping machines, uh, drill press attachments um, with a little torque clutch in them. All manner of things you can get to turn a tap. Um, the most important thing to remember is to try and start that thing straight. Do the best you can to make sure you're in line when you start turning that handle. And keep yourself lined up. Once it catches and starts, go in a couple of turns, back it up. If you have access to air, blow the chips out. Squirt a little more oil in there, run in a couple of turns, back it off. Blow the chips out, run in a couple of more turns until that that tap screws in there just like a like a bolt screws in with two fingers that goes for everything except the tapered pipe tap with the tapered taps uh, or the pipe thread taps you have to count your threads um, don't go more than eight turns to start and see how your sensor or your plug fits anyway i thought that would be kind of a neat video for the morning I know I get a little bit long-winded sometimes, and my my coffee might be getting a little cold, but uh, I hope somebody got something out of that. If you're interested in buying anything like this, uh, and you don't know where to get it, shoot me an email or leave me a comment. Uh, I love your comments, guys. Today we're at 398 subscribers. I really want to get to that 500 mark. So if you haven't done so, please like and subscribe. And I've got some good content coming up real quick. I've got some more beautiful tools to show you. We've got a couple of mini bike builds we're going to kick off here pretty soon. Uh, Frosty has just been buried at work. Really, really busy. And I should be taking more video down there. Um, but I appreciate each and every one of you. Every view, every comment, every click. I, it all means a lot to me. You know, that means I'm, I'm putting out something that you guys enjoy. So, you all have a great holiday weekend. Be good to each other. Remember what this weekend is really all about. 
you know, you see a you see a veteran, you know somebody that's a veteran, you call them and say, see how they're doing, thank them for their service. Yeah, I'll take care now.